Okay, so we're just preparing the drapes here. We did a bit of landmarking of the chest prior to make sure that we would set up the drapes appropriately. So the area has been prepped. Now we're just draping here. So in this next step, making sure it's as clean as possible uh, at our insertion site. You can smoothen out the drapes too. Perfect. Excellent. So we prepped our site. This is uh, our standard procedure in the ICU. We make sure that the whole area is prepped. Now uh, we're going to prepare the ultrasound probe in this sterile cover to introduce it into the surgical field here, or the procedural field. So I'm gonna help you prepare the probe. Okay, you got it there safely, perfect. Excellent, okay, now just pull that sheath over and place the elastics on the, the, the probe. Just keep the sheath in place. So I generally do uh, prepare the ultrasound probe in this kind of procedure because it really uh, helps to make sure that you're in, you're in the correct place when you're doing the procedure. And generally what we're gonna do here is we're gonna landmark the site in advance of the procedure with ultrasound to make sure we're above the diaphragm. So let's see a clear diaphragm here. Okay, nice, you can see here kind of semi-lunar. There's the spine sign, the nice anechoic field. Okay, helps determine that we are indeed in a safe place and we're well above a diaphragm. Now, we're going to try this in two planes. So I'd like to, you to move the probe 90 degrees counterclockwise. And we can see here a very large area and cross section, very nice space to enter and safe. We're away from lung and a very good distance, uh, you know, usually for more than three centimeters. But here we have plenty of distance to work with. But now that we've marked it in two orthogonal planes, now we're going to place, use a, use a blunt fill cannula to make a mark on the skin. That way it'll help guide your... Uh, your thoracentesis. And here we are doing ultrasound guidance, but this is called static guidance, where we've made a mark in advance of the procedure versus dynamic guidance where we're gonna watch the needle go in. I generally will advocate for static guidance as I do believe it is safe um, and appropriate for most skilled practitioners to perform. So now we're gonna freeze the area and we'll freeze the skin first, then move into the periosteum. And then once that uh, has had adequate time to settle, We'll introduce a large needle, usually around 22 gauge, one and a half inch, all the way down uh, over the rib into the pleural space to make sure we have a satisfactory tract that has been uh, infiltrated with local anesthetic. So that's great, we've got a clear track all the way down to the pleural space. The fire needle itself will pass to the rib and you'll go over the rib slowly. And you'll be aspirating as you pass the fire needle. Once you've successfully aspirated pleural fluid, you can then pass the wire and follow the, the steps accordingly. Okay, so now we'll pass the finer needle right into the pleural space. We'll pass slowly over the rib, aspirating as we go. Okay, here we go. That's successful. We'll leave it in place there. Next, I'll ask you to pass the wire and make sure you control the wire at all times here. Okay, so once the wire passes about roughly 15, 20 centimeters, then it's okay to remove the needle and the kind of plastic assembly on the back. You have a nice clear track now. You can make a small incision just to allow passage a uh, safe passage of the dilator itself. And once the dilator has successfully established a nice track, it doesn't have to go in all the way to the hub, but it's got to go far enough that there is a safe passage from external to internal to the pleural space itself. Make sure here you are perpendicular to the pleural space. Perfect. Okay, now the pigtail, the eight and a half inch pigtail will be unfurled over this, over the rigid end of this wire and it'll be passed into the pleural space. I like how you're watching very closely here to make sure you control the wire at all times. That's a really important aspect of this procedure. So this will be passed into the pleural space. I can see here you're threading that back until you see 
the wire come out of the rear end of the catheter. Once that's uh, able to be, uh, to be uh, held, then you can advance the catheter into the pleural space. Nice. nice. And there should be no resistance here. It should be very easy to do. And then once you're there, you can put your finger over the rear end. A very easy way to stem the flow is to place the three-way stopcock on and just uh, move the, the um, white handle towards the line itself, and that'll actually close off the pleural fluid. This can be drained from there. So this can be either used for a sample, like a typical Thor synthesis, or used as an indwelling drain. There is no string on this pigtail. It's fairly uh, straightforward. So it'll be sutured to there, and then there'll be a suture to the skin. Um, and then once you've anchored to the skin, you've thrown down a few knots, then you'll tie that to the catheter itself. And then you will hook up um, that to a plurivac system. Um, I would not encourage to leave a three-way stopcock between the catheter and the plurivac system because it does shrink the lumen size. And if you want to stem the, stem the tide of pleural fluid flow, then you can always clamp the chest tube itself. So I would take that off um, when we are connecting. And with this kit, there is a lure lock to a uh, Christmas tree adapter to allow us to connect directly to our plurivac system. And that's basically it. You know, from here, I get a chest x-ray, rule any complications. But generally, this has been a very safe procedure. And as we know from the ultrasound, ample space here that uh, we're not at risk of hitting anything uh, clinically significant. In some cases, uh, I would encourage you to use the linear probe to screen for any intercostal vessels in advance. That's generally easier done before the draping is made, because then you'll have to prepare two probes. Um, so here, we did that actually before we prepped and draped, but that is another uh, kind of pro-level tip to reduce the risk of hitting an intercostal vessel, whether an artery or vein, or even the intercostal bundle. Okay, so that's basically it. Drain's gonna be tied in place and connected here to a chest tube. Sands that through a stopcock. That's it for now.